Hi friends, uh, a number of people asked me to do a video about uh, Kruke, which is one of the obsessions of the 133. But first of all, to show you Kruke, I have to introduce you to the concept of uh, uh, the concept of obsession. Okay, let's see how the uh, obsession work in general. Now, obsessio in Latin means uh, to besiege. If we think what uh, uh, we uh, should do, if we if we were um, uh, generals that want to besiege uh, an enemy city, we also can understand what uh, we have to do to properly use the obsession as a, a fencing position. Now, if we think. Uh, what we uh, shall do if we, uh, if we were uh, um, generals uh, attacking a city, okay, where we can think uh, we will start uh, with uh, going uh, uh, under the, uh, the, the enemy city, uh, under the walls. We fortify ourselves under, under the walls and uh, we can't uh, let the opponent go out or the, uh, even receive help, help from, uh, from the outside. Then we uh, uh, will uh, leave our opponent with just a uh, few, so, uh, few choices, which are uh, um, surrender, die, or uh, uh, attack. This is the only three things that uh, the opponent can do uh, if uh, he don't receive help from the outside. Now, if we translate this in our uh, fencing perspective, we can understand what we have to do. So, we have to besiege our opponent. So, first of all, to besiege our opponent, we have to uh, go under the standard measure. So, we are, we are out of measure, we enter fast in the opponent measure. Second, we have to fortify ourselves. So, Fortify in this sense means uh, close the line of the most direct attack. I will take for example the obsession against the Terza Custodia. We are in our half sheet, we approach, the, we close the line, the most direct line of uh, the opponent. Now we have to also threaten him as uh, in a real uh, siege. And we do this with the tip of our sword. You can see that uh, the tip is really near to the face of uh, our opponent. From here, if the opponent don't do anything, we can simply trust. If the opponent uh, do something, we will see that uh, he have a number of choices. The first one is the most uh, um, simple one that is a, a, a natural defense so strike the blow he have uh, charged in his guard to keep uh, uh, in control the opponent's sword this is the first situation there is also another number of situations that we, we will see in the action itself so for example go backwards so it's a retreat it's flee uh, but binding at the same time, which is the better choice, or uh, a number of uh, other situations that change depending on guard and the obsession that uh, we will see in, uh, in other videos. So we will start uh, with the Terza Custodia obsession now. Uh, me and, uh, and Elisa will show you this, uh, uh, this guard and this obsession. To, we, because it's one of the most easy to understand and to show. Then uh, in the next video we will see Cook and uh, the option that go uh, that, that came from uh, this uh, obsession. Okay, let's see the Terza Custodia obsession.
now we have seen uh, we have seen almost uh, uh, every archetype of situation we will encounter when we besiege the um, third ward uh, with our obsession. In the next video, we will see how Crook works uh, uh, following these principles. It is important to say that not every obsessor works in this way. All the uh, obsessor that um, um, besiege one um, a guard that uh, almost throws uh, cats work in this way. With the trust-oriented guards, it's uh, a slightly different uh, um, approach and a slightly different uh, way to um, besiege. The, the opponent that we will see in a specific video dedicated to this kind of uh, uh, obsession. Okay, I hope this video will help you. Subscribe to my channel and uh, please uh, give a look to my Patreon if you want to support my work. Thanks for watching and see you next time.